Welcome to another weekly edition of the Hellraiser vlog with Mickey Hellier. How are you? I'm good, Sean. Good to see you again. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very good. How did you rate, straight into it, how did you rate David Hayes' comeback? Um, I thought there was good there was positives and negatives from it. I thought um, the big plus for me was the fact that it got all sorts of people talking about boxing and they got three million viewers. Yeah, very That's impressive. Normal figures for, for, for boxing on a small channel. I'm sure Dave's never had three million viewers mm. at any time in his past. So it shows the value of boxing to broadcasters and to uh, the, it, it sort of uh, showed the popularity that something that people want to watch. Mm. And it was done in quite a short amount of time, wasn't it? Yes. Like it was marketed not very well and we only found out that it was going to be on Dave about two weeks prior to yeah, the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that, that, I think that goes to tell me further Probably if they'd have had like a six week build up, um, like you normally want for an event like that, minimum, um, they'd have got even more mm. viewers. So it's, it speaks volumes um, in a positive way about boxing that, that it generates that kind of interest because that's what advertisers want. So, what are the other positives then, you said? Um, I think what people are excited about even more, I mean, the heavyweight division is buzzing at the moment Tyson Fury, with Dylan White, and AJ, and Joshua. And I think this was like an addition because before maybe David Hay was more like a, a question mark, like what is he going to box again? Mm. Is he going to be injured? Is he like what's going on? Um, this at least showed that he means business. He wants to get on with his career and um, he wants to, um, to sort of to be active. What about the performance itself? How did you rate that? Um, I thought. The performance was good. How can, I mean, he knocked him out in the first round. He hurt the guy several times first and then finished him. So you can't say it wasn't a good. I mean, just because the opponent was the, the, the opponent was terrible, was very poor. I mean, Hay hurt him. He was very open to the body. He was open to the head. Hay hurt him to the body and hurt to the head. Mm. The guy walked back in straight lines with his hands down and his chin up in the air. He stood on the with his back to the ropes, stood still. I mean. In your first three months of learning to box as an amateur, you start sparring and you get told, you know, if someone's a big puncher, this is how you deal with it, you move, you, you don't do these things that he was doing in a, you know, supposedly a top ten in the world. I mean, he, he's that Demori for me, he, he absolutely has no business being in any top 300, you know, mm. there's just no excuse for, to, to have a guy like that in the top 100 or in the top 10. I mean, that's mm. something incredible, but we know the, the, the business, the politics. So an impressive performance from maybe an uneducated point of view. I think, I think, yeah, uneducated viewers, which let's face it, on Dave, there probably were quite a, a lot of, um, because they're not people that probably watch boxing every week. It would have looked really exciting. And I'll tell you what, when they made the David Hay fight, so about the Joshua, eventually, and um, that'll be, I don't know, but, that's the sort of performance that will get buys. Mm. That's the sort of thing that people, oh wow, you know. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, if you stood Anthony Joshua on the North Pole and Mark DeMori on the South Pole, you could say, they're actually, that's not enough distance between them for, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. who, uh, so I wouldn't really use that performance as a yardstick to tell me, oh, Hayes back in good form mm. because Hay never got out of first gear on mm. his opponent. No, it's quite often I do a lot of watching on YouTube or buying clips of if I'm gonna make a fight between this guy and this guy. And maybe sometimes you could pick up especially when you're talking guys that are great in the top ten in the world, you pick out like one or two fights. Like, he keeps doing this. Mm. Every time this guy this type of fight does this to him, he reacts like this. That's a weakness. But with Demori you know, you couldn't really list the, the, the following. Where he got those wins from to build him up is a bit of a mystery because um, I think I recognise one name. I'm a full-time matchmaker pretty much for the last how many years. Um, there was a Croatian and I saw who I know is really not a flyer. He only beat him on points. So I knew the level uh, was likely to be what it was mm. and what I was right. Yeah. In fact, we gave the prediction. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bet Boxing.com did a, a special offer, uh, which um, I think they offered six to one for a, a first round knockout. 
you have to pounce on that. That yeah. is the easiest money of the year. You will not get another betting opportunity this year, probably in any sport. As good Six as that. Six that was like a, a gift. So those who didn't listen missed out, but congratulations to again. those who did. Exactly. The Hellraiser blog. If you go through all the Hellraiser blogs from last year, you'll see a long line of, of winning bets. So could have had one net six to one, six times. Um, I just bought a new flat um, last week, and uh, the mortgage is already looking well. <laughs> Thanks to David Hay. There you go. There you go. Let's talk about the undercard on that show. What did you make of the undercard? Um, I thought it. Uh, I thought it was awful. I mean, yeah. I thought, I mean, I'd be embarrassed to put someone in the fight. So, and I thought, but this is one thing that, for me, I'm a boxing fan. I love boxing. I want mm. to put all good, good fights on the undercard because I'm proud of the, the event. I thought, um, I mean, the, 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 although there were free tickets being given out on the day of the fight, so that tells you right, they haven't probably sold particularly well. But the, the venue was packed. It seemed like there's a really good atmosphere in there. Mm. Um, and even though basically there was no proper undercard, um, to the viewers, I think it came across really. So it tells you, okay, maybe we put too much emphasis on the, 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 the because even when it's like driven, you you you've still got you know three million viewers that were happy to tune in. Yeah. And if you went on. Uh, like Twitter or any social media afterwards, there wasn't that much sort of saying, well, who's this? You know, when Audrey Harrison knocked out that guy on his debut, who really, there were probably not that much between these two. I'd mm. probably favour maybe Demori to beat uh, the guy that passed Audrey in his first fight, but not with any confidence. No. And I think if, um, you know, people wanted to watch it, they, they seemed happy enough. There wasn't like the outrage, like when Audrey boxed that guy, there was like floods of complaints. Yeah. There, there wasn't really with this. And from, from someone that knows anything about technical boxing, you look at this demore, you can see he can't box. Mm. Like, there's no other way of putting it. Mm. The, the guy was like, so many mistakes, and he was open in every department, whatever he'd done. He was, you know, you punch him like, hey, only he's one punch to, to take a guy out. And yeah. hey, it hurt him, if you watch the video, you hurt him to the body. The guy's hands were low in the first place. I've never hurt the body, they were low. And he was, when you stand still with your back to the ropes, you're very much asking for what happened. Yeah. Um, one of Daryl Williams' former opponents, Richard Horton, was on the yeah, other side. Yes, I heard actually Richard Horton was probably the exception. He was the one fight that people seem to have enjoyed watching. Yeah. He boxed uh, Tony Dodson. Tony Dodson was a big, big prospect right before, a very nice guy. Um, I met him. Uh, I actually saw him box a few times before. I, mean, I met him at the prize fight when I had um, Joe Smythe in the, the, the prize fight. Mm. Um, that was a good fight. And, and obviously, I know him all too well um, because he boxed my Daryl Williams. I mean, Daryl Darryl knocked him out in the round. Mm. Um, so it speaks good for Daryl, sort of says, you know, look, this guy just went the, the, the distance and in, a, in a good fight mm. with uh, Dodson. And uh, Daryl, Daryl took him out quickly. So. Mm. Um, another fighter on that undercard was Wadi Camacho, who fights your Dan Wadi, Woodgate. Wadi Camacho, yeah, Wadi Camacho uh, is fighting Dan Woodgate. We've been talking about Woodgate Gate. Woodgate Gate. <laughs> Going to start making that trend. Because Dan, uh, I didn't even notice, do you know what? Uh, all the tickets for that show are sold out. The, mm -hmm. the, the, they're all out with the fighters. Um, Wadi is not. Responded to any sort of communication that we've tried to get him to, to come and pick tickets up. So, but we didn't. I put the bid in. Mm. I, I, I put the bid in because I wanted to back my fighter. I've had Dan Woodgate almost. He had his first fight, and then I've had him ever since then. Managed him, and that's a, a mission that we took on together to get Dan Southern Area title to win it. Mm. Um, he boxed for it at light heavy, he really struggled at the weight, so that's why we, we come up to, to Cruiser. Mm -hmm. And the bid was put in, because I want to give Dan the absolute best opportunity that we can possibly give him, for him to uh, go and do the business and, and win the title. Mm -hmm. And that meant putting it on my show, not get, so that's why we put the bid that we put in. And, um, now, you know, he, he's got to go and do, do his part, but um, for Wadi not to 
and not why did we know he's someone that's vocal on social media you know he makes a lot of noise he, he likes talking and drumming up interest he's clearly either made a decision himself or been given instructions don't respond to it don't mm. don't talk don't do anything you're just going to go in there take the money or you can come in and, and take the money he'll be getting the 40 percent end of the purse the loser's purse because uh me and dan have gone through a chapter in verse uh, I'd say coming from the amateurs, probably on paper, you'd say uh, Waddy has got maybe better credentials, you know, uh, a better um, builder, but um, a pedigree. But I think we've what that it's the right time for Dan to have this fight now, mm. and he's progressed steadily, and I'm. I'm Seeing the confidence that Dan's developed over the last couple of years, especially, um, I'm backing him. You know, I, I think he's going to go and upset uh, Waddy. Is that from watching Waddy's performance, or um, are you just confident that your man can? Not necessarily prov- this, this particular performance. I just think Dan now is a, a better boxer, mm. and that, that you know, it's not like a, a 90-10 fight. It's maybe a 45-55. F- it's going to be close. That's why I wanted it on my show. I want to do as many things as I can to favour my guy. You mm-hmm. know? And um, I, I, I find it very mean spirited. I mean, we haven't got any tickets to give him anyway now. Mm-hmm. They've all gone. The okay. fighters have come back. In fact, we've got more fighters wanting. I mean, more. I mean, it's a huge deal. We've got loads of fighters. Yeah. And um, we haven't got any more to, to now with what he wants on there. There, there aren't. Any. Yeah. But I just think it's not in the spirit of boxing to, mm. to behave like that. You know, it's always okay. My fighter's going to go and fight this guy's fighter, mm. but we will go and support our guy. We mm. don't think we don't want to give a penny to the other promoters. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to sell, which is basically what it sounds like. It's, yeah. it's happening here. Yeah. And um, uh, don't regret putting the first bid that I want. You know, we're going to make good money on the show, and Dan Woodgate's going to walk away with a Southern area title, and that will make it worth it. Remind us when that date is. That is uh, February the 27th at your call. We've got about 10 dates booked at your call for the coming year. Busy calendar. Uh, yeah, it's going to be busy. It's going to be, um, I think it'll be a, a good year. You know, I mean, I, I used to live in Bethlehem Green years ago and I couldn't get out of there fast enough. Mm. Um, area was completely transformed. So I'm going to come moving back in there in three months time, four months time, I think once all the renovations are done in the flat and the board. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to living there now, obviously just down the road from my house, yeah. the marina where we're, we're training every day. So. Early mornings and late finishes. Yeah, um, I don't mind if it's like an hour travelling in, an hour yeah. back, so. Cuts that out. Um, a little bit closer to home, uh, next Thursday the 28th you've got your Burns night at the Park Lane Hotel. Yes, which we're looking at. It's actually probably my favourite dinner show of, of the year, or mm-hmm. one of them. You know the top ones we do like the haggis, and we have a, a reciter that comes in and uh, that uh, sort of repeats some verses from Burns, and uh, yeah, it's a good night. And I think if um, if I could find more events like that, I'd probably do them because people quite like having something a bit quirky. So Burns is something unusual. You know, we eat haggis, we drink whiskey, we uh, you know have like a Scottish themed night. Guys mm-hmm. turn up. Killed. It's a good night out. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe we we'll have to look for like, maybe a St. Patrick's and a couple, maybe a St. George. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. What? Uh, who's on that? Who's on that show? Who's on that? Uh, Asilia Byfield is going to box in it. Okay. Uh, new signing Sheldon Purdy is a flyweight. So Asilia is now seven fights, seven wins. Managed him for I think just under a year. Mm-hmm. So he's had a good start. He's had plenty of fights and he's he's won them all. Yeah. Um, we might actually have a title fight for him quite soon. That we were in the process of making that might not happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, he's got plenty of time and he's really improving. He's been sparring with Carl Frampton, he's been sparring with George Groves, sparring all sorts of people that have uh, brought him out of his comfort zone and, and you know, brought him on to. As the progression. Yeah, and I think, you know, looking forward to, to working with a senior and his team, his trainer, because um, he, he hasn't had it. As hard as it could have been, you know, he hasn't gone in as an opponent, but he hasn't had it easy either. You know, he's had mm. to sort of really put his socks up, and he's done it. Mm. You know, and he's been sparring good, good guys, and uh, yeah, could be a good year for us in here then. And uh, we'll, we'll have to, to we'll have to catch up with him after uh, the Park Lane Hotel. Bill was made up with Sheldon Purdy, Flyweight, with the new signing, Sheldon Purdy. and uh, Richard Connolly, who uh, 
I he's had one fight. Uh, he he boxed once um, about three years ago. Uh, then had an injury and was out. Now he's back. So looking forward to working with him again. Well, we'll remember the names and we'll keep up to date with them and hopefully we'll get uh, to chat with them next week uh, at some point. Mickey, thank you very much for this week's edition and we'll catch up with you next time. Yeah.